You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's matchup with the Missouri Tigers. If you've been listening to the show for the past couple of weeks, been, we've been talking about this one for quite some time. Actually, I believe for right at three weeks now, we've been talking about this matchup and how important it could be, especially considering it is the start of SEC play. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. It would mean a ton to us here at Locked On Kentucky trying to get up past 2,800 subs. I'm sure we can do it here soon. Let's go ahead and make that happen. All right, we've talked about the Missouri Tigers, like I mentioned a second ago, for quite some time. In fact, December 7th was the first time that we talked about them. If you want to go check out the most recent episode of Locked on Kentucky before this, we actually played a clip from December 7th talking about how important it is for Kentucky to be aware of what this team, this Missouri Tigers team, is capable of doing heading into this matchup. In those three weeks since we have discussed that, there have been... And to be honest with you, there have only been three games played, so there's not a massive sample size to go off of since we made that comment. But the interesting thing that we pointed out just a few weeks ago, these three games for the Tigers were going to be difficult. Kansas, UCF, and Illinois. They got the Kansas game at home. They were blown out. But they beat UCF, and then they went and beat a top 15 Illinois team drubbed them 93 to 71 and a lot of what we're going to talk about here today revolves around what they've done in their most recent contests more specifically what happened in that Illinois game for the fighting Illini to just completely collapse and how does Kentucky avoid it against this Tigers team so with just the overall overview man what a redundant statement that is the overview of this team I think is pretty simple they're fast they move the ball around well, and they get to the rim. Those are the three things you need to know about this team. If you don't know anything else going into this game, they are fast. They really, really pass the rock extremely well. We're going to get to that in a second. And they get to the rim quick. Only one of their five starters was at Missouri just a season ago. They've got a new coach in Dennis Gates. He comes in from Cleveland State. The Tigers have transfers from transfers from Clemson, Cleveland State, like I just mentioned, Northern Iowa, Bradley. The only player in their starting five that was there a season ago is Kobe Brown, who has been there for half a decade. So right now, you're looking at a hodgepodge. It's very similar to the Arkansas type of mold, and it's something that I've not seen a comparison to, to be honest with you. Uh, it's similar to the Arkansas type of mold in the fact that Eric Musselman, known as the importer, brought in a bunch of of uh, transfers in from, uh, you know, from all over the place, actually. And he's a really, really good X's and O's coach, and they end up doing a lot of great things, despite the fact that I think a lot of people would assume chemistry is not there, just because of the turmoil, because of the lack of consistency. So I I think that this is a very similar comp to that. Now, stylistically, what they may want to do on offense is a little bit more different. In fact, I think that uh, Arkansas is a little bit more half-court oriented, even though they do push the pace pretty well. Missouri, on the other hand, is definitely up and down the court transition offense as their game, which could be interesting, and we'll get to that later on in the show, about how Kentucky may want to approach this. It's always interesting whenever you come against a team that that has a clash uh, with your style, right, in terms of like pace of play and intensity. But whenever there's a team that likes to run honestly more than you do, it's interesting to see like how you as a coaching staff kind of assess and then you know implement the game plan. Because it, it can't, it, 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 there, it, there's a note I made here. Missouri feels like a team that can make things get out of hand quickly for either side. And I think that's, that's kind of applicable in the way that maybe Kentucky wants to approach this. But anyway, excellent ball movement. Like I mentioned, they are fourth nationally in assists per game. They pass extremely well. I would highly encourage you guys, if you have not already, go back and watch the highlights from that Illinois game. What did they do really, really well? It's something that is the hallmark of a lot of really good college basketball teams. They create steals. They get down 
to the other end of the court. They get to the rim and they finish well. Fourth nationally in assists per game. First in the nation in steal percentage. They do the things that they do well, extremely well. And I think a lot of it is a hallmark, honestly, of good coaching. Dennis Gates, so far right now, 10-1 and one on the season. That slip up against Kansas. Look, this team Missouri has is not incredibly talented. Now, they've got some dudes. They've got two in particular I want to get to whenever we're talking about who needs to be the hero in this matchup. But they don't have, like, insane talent. It's the coaching, I think, in the X's and O's that is really carrying them. As a Wildcats fan, I respect that considering what we're going through right now. Volume shooting is also another emphasis. This, this is one of the best teams in the nation in terms of points per game. They get up and down the court, and they fog them up. They fog them up. They get to the rim so quick. Again, go back and watch that Illinois game. Go back and watch some of their other contests so far this season. It's a meaty. It's just bam. And I know that Kim Palm says that they're 19th nationally in average possession length, 15 and a half seconds. But, man, it feels like sometimes they just blitzkrieg these guys. Go and watch the film. I need you guys to just go and watch this offense move. There is so much movement as opposed to, and I hate to use the, the comparison here, as opposed to Kentucky. There's so much movement. There's not. There's normally never a possession where four guys are just sitting there not doing anything. Now, you did see it a couple of times against Missouri, and it was bailed out by really, really, really good shot, or not shot selection, or just really good shot making. It's just good all-around play. They just, they make things happen. They're one of the worst teams in the nation in terms of offensive rebounding. That's one of the only places I've been able to find where it's like, okay, Kentucky outside of the talent advantage, definitely has a statistical advantage here. In terms of the matchup, this is an area where Kentucky could thrive because they've got one of the best offensive rebounding big men in the entire nation. And they're also not half bad at offensive rebounds themselves. But right now, I mean, you look at the way that this Kentucky, or excuse me, this Missouri offense is playing, you've got to be able to see some type of consistency on the defensive end. And we talked about it last episode, right? Talked about Coach Cal emphasizing toughness, right? I don't necessarily know if you need to emphasize toughness in this game. What you need to emphasize is getting back. You need to be able to get back and get to the rim and put your hands up because Missouri is going to come all the way down and immediately get to the hole. You're going to see a lot in this game. We talked about it on last episode. Slips to the basket. What has Kentucky struggled with on the defensive end against opponents that are not phenomenal athletically? St. Peter's, Notre Dame last year. Really, really good scheme in the half court. Slips to the basket, backdoor cuts. Things that will draw you to sleep, lure you to sleep, and get you at the end. Again, I want to reiterate here. Missouri feels like a team that can make things get out of hand quickly for either side. And so far, they've only lost with, with the strategy once. Again, 10-1 and one on the year. Receiving votes in the AP Top 25. This is a game that Kentucky, I don't want to say can't afford to lose, but goodness gracious, they need this one. They need this one bad. So who needs to be the hero here? Or is it actually going to end up being a team effort from the Wildcats? I want to continue this preview in just a second. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at BetOnline.net. They are your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from college uh, football, uh, the bowl season, pro football, NFL is about to get into the playoffs, uh, NBA basketball, college basketball, obviously the World Cup just ended. They've got it all over there at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, so you can head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. That is BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, continuing along here on the Wednesday edition of Locked On, Kentucky Lance Daw hanging out here with you. Who needs to be the hero in this matchup for the Wildcats? Who needs to be the one that steps up, and at the end of the day, whenever we come back here to do this recap, who's going to be the one that we're speaking so highly of? Like, man, this is the reason that Kentucky won this game. I know it's a little cliche, but at this point, I honestly think it's got to be Oscar Shibway. Just based on what we've seen out of Missouri from a film standpoint, 
And based on what we've seen out of the Tigers from a numbers standpoint, Oscar Shibway coming into this game should be expected to have a good outing. Like I mentioned again, they're one of the worst teams in the country in terms of offensive rebounding. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they are just simply not tall. They're in the bottom third. They're actually one of the shortest teams in the entire nation. There are 300 and what? 363 teams in the entire country. They are 309th in average height. You look at their starting lineup. Like I mentioned, only one player that was there a season or at the at the at Missouri a season ago is still in the starting five, and that's Kobe Brown. And he's six foot eight. He's the tallest player on their team, actually, believe it or not, at six foot eight. Nick Honor, one of their guards, is five ten. Sean East is six three. Noah Carter, six six. Demoy Hodge is six four. So they've got some decently sized guards, but in terms of their their small forward, power forward, and center. They've got nothing. Oscar Shibwe, even defensively, I feel like if, if Kentucky puts him in the right spots, should have a good game. It's everybody around him that I'm kind of concerned about with this Missouri team. Like, okay, how does Kentucky consistently guard so much speed? Because Severe Wheeler is not helping out in this game defensively. He's not. He may be quick. But I don't like the matchup against a six foot three and six foot four guard that do nothing but get to the rim and try and finish. That's not that's not going to be good for for Severe. It's also probably not going to be phenomenal for Antonio Reeves. I mean, you're going to rely on Casey Moss to do what he's done consistently. How many steals he gets in this game and how much pressure he actually is able to put on the ball is going to be fascinating. So right now, heading into this game, it's Oscar Shibway for me. It's him. And I think you can probably look at Case, excuse me, Case and Wallace as your number two. <laughs> but right now, uh, who else for this team is firing on all cylinders? I think you could make the argument that nobody is. Out of those two, Jacob Toppin's not been good consistently for the Wildcats, and Chris Livingston could be, but Kentucky apparently just doesn't want to play him. Why they won't play him more at the four is is beyond me. And you may say, well, he's not tall enough to do it. Well, in this matchup, he certainly is. Six foot six, 220, baby. Missouri doesn't have a lot of players that are over six foot six right now. Put him at power forward. Why not? Put him at the four. If you're looking for efficiency against one of the nation's most efficient offenses, why wouldn't you go with Chris Livingston? I don't know. Doesn't make sense. Missouri offense, man, it is powerful. So Kentucky all around, you know, talk about uh, the hero. I think on the offensive end, you need a hero. It's got to be a team effort on the defensive end. Let me tell you something. Five guys for the Missouri Tigers are averaging at least 10 points per game. Two of their best scores, Demoy Hodge and Kobe Brown. Like I mentioned, Kobe Brown has been at Missouri for, I'm not trying to be dramatic. It, it, he actually, I think, has been there for, for half a decade. At least it feels like it. He has been a consistent player for them. For quite some time, he's averaging 14 and a half, six rebounds a game, three assists per contest. He's shooting 61% from the floor. And get this, the big man is shooting 44.4% from three. Which, if you go back and look at his game logs, so for his freshman year, he was sitting, shooting 25%. Sophomore year, 25% again. Junior year, 21%. And then this year, he's jumped up to 44.4. Let me tell you, say it is, it is about the coaching in this game. It's about the coaching. This team has had so much dramatic improvement all around with the players that have stuck around and the players that have come in have played excellently. Demoy Hodge is a transfer that came in. He's averaging almost 17 a night. He's shooting 52.2% from the floor as a guard, and he's shooting 42.5% from three. Six foot four, 190 pound senior. He is going to be the biggest player in this game to watch, I think, because Oscar Shibwe, I think, can handle Kobe Brown to an extent on the defensive end. But Demoy Hodge, I don't know if Kentucky's got a player out there outside of Wallace that could truly put a clamp down on him. And even then, I don't know if Wallace is doing that because of how quickly Missouri tries to get their buckets. And I hate to sit here and continually say like, oh, this is going to be a bad matchup. This is going to be this. This is going to be that. Oh, all this negative stuff. Look, I think Kentucky's going to score as long as they don't do anything anything stupid in the half court. They're bigger. They're just as fast. They're athletic. They just need some of their outside shooters to have a little bit of consistency, and they'll continue to play in this game. They'll continue to be in the game. 
Now, if they start to do what some of Missouri's opponents have done so far this season, which is get a little rushed, get a little panicked, maybe turn the ball over a little bit, it could get out of hand, like I said. And that's something that Kentucky has also struggled with in some of these bigger road games, right? The, we continue to go back to the LSU game, the Gonzaga game, the UCLA game for the final four minutes, rushing things, not understanding when to settle down and not getting good coaching at the end of games. So that could be an issue. If Kentucky does not find consistency from outside the arc, this could be a difficult one. And I have confidence that there, there's not really a whole lot on Missouri's end that will make me say, oh, Kentucky's not going to shoot well in this game. I feel like it's more about you know what the Wildcats do themselves. It's about what they do as a team. Can we knock down those shots? It's not about whether or not Missouri can ha- haggle them and defend them. It's about whether or not Kentucky can truly make them. And if they do, then this is going to be competitive and it could end up being a Kentucky win. But as of right now, the line, in case you're wondering, go back to bet online and go check this out. It's at two and a half right now. I'm not touching that. And I would highly encourage you guys to at least consider before you touch that line, definitely look at some others. Kobe Brown, Demoy Hodge, those are going to be the two big ones. Case and Wallace, Oscar Shebway for the Wildcats. Those are the guys that I'm looking at. And it all comes down to one word. Specifically for Missouri, and then it needs to be applied in Kentucky's case. Confidence. This Missouri team, when you watch them play, what do they have? Confidence in how they shoot. They have confidence in how they play defense. And again, I think that goes back to coaching. Some of you have tried to disagree with me and say that it's a, it's a lack of ability. But I, again, I want to point out that these are transfers from Clemson, Bradley, Northern Iowa, and Cleveland State. They're 10-1, and one and they just blew the doors off a top 15 team. That's coaching. The confidence there, that's coaching. Kentucky needs some of that in this game. And it's going to be tough. And I want to give my final score predictions in a minute. Before we get to that, I want to just remind you guys to please, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. And if you have a thought on how this game's going to go, we've only got a few hours before it tips off, you can leave it in the YouTube comments below. And if you're listening on podcast, at Locked on UK is where you can find me. You can also drop your score predictions there. Actually, just recently, if you want to go check out a tweet that I had, uh, I asked you guys on a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you in uh, in Kentucky getting a win against Missouri? And let me tell you something. Uh, I think it was up to like 230, 240 replies on the tweet. And a lot of you guys are repeating what I'm saying, which is that you're not particularly confident. But again, please go check us out on Twitter, at Locked on UK. Please make sure to give us a follow if you're subscribed on YouTube. Really appreciate it. Like the video if you have already subscribed. It would mean a ton to us here moving forward. All right, wrapping up the Wednesday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Final score predictions. I want you to go ahead, again, if you're listening on YouTube, throw them in the comments. What do you think this game's going to be? If you're a Missouri fan coming in after this game is over, you can go ahead and leave into the comments below a snarky comment. Go ahead. Mark it down. Don't care. And if we've won and you're a Missouri fan, you can go ahead and leave a snarky comment in the comments below. I don't care. Right now, I'm leaning towards Missouri in this game, and I hate the fact that I have to say that, considering the expectations heading into this year. My expectations, personally, was that Kentucky's outside shooting and guard play would be a little bit better. And you say, Lance, Kentucky's shooting 39.9% from three on the year. That's eighth nationally. Eighth. And you're right. But has that showed up in the games against Michigan State, Gonzaga, and UCLA? No, it hasn't. And that's the, those are the games where it needed to show up. Kentucky has gotten their buckets against really bad teams. Howard, Duquesne, South Carolina State, North Florida, Michigan was even a game where Kentucky found some success late. Yale scored 69, though. Florida A&M, of course, anybody. I could score on Florida A&M, probably. And I'm not the most athletic person out there. Dern and I could probably do it. Kentucky right now has an an incredibly weak strength of schedule. An incredibly weak strength of schedule. And right now, I think that they've got to find whatever it is that makes them Kentucky. We talked about that confidence. They need to find that right now, and it needs to happen in this game. 
I want to reiterate something. Missouri is not particularly talented. They've got some really good shooters. They've got a lot of confidence, and they've got an excellent head coach right now that is in his bag on the offensive end. And I'm not saying that Missouri lacks athleticism. Obviously, it's a it's a it's an athletic team. It's it's basketball. But what I'm saying here is in re, in relation to the Kansases of the world, the Kentuckys of the world, they're not quite there yet in the way that they want to recruit. And so there's opportunities to be had in this game. It's just can Kentucky execute and can John Calipari find the open spots on the offensive end? Can he find the right play calls? And can he put them in position? Right now, final score prediction, Missouri by four. I've got them 79-75 in favor of the Missouri Tigers. I hate to say it, I think Kentucky loses this game. And then moving forward, that's going to be an interesting question we have to ask ourselves, right? You've got Louisville on December 31st. That's probably going to be a blowout. Looking forward to that. And then listen to this. LSU, Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee. South Carolina there is probably a little bit of a reprieve, especially considering that game's at home. But LSU, Bama, and Tennessee, you get them all up front. And then you got Kansas exactly a month from now. So... That's my thought on that. If you've got any thoughts, leave them in the YouTube comments below or hit me on the socials. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. Hey, you can follow the show again on Twitter at Locked on UK. Follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. Follow the show on Instagram over at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for a recap of this Kentucky-Missouri game. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And God bless.